Wooden coasters are a dying breed. The original coasters were all made of wood, and it wasn't until the 60s and 70s that steel coasters became prominent. Still, wooden coasters had a place in the world, and 113 are still operating in America to this day, compared to 698 steel coasters. Wooden coasters may be cheaper up front, but they're harder to maintain. This is a constant battle for parks, pouring money in year after year, keeping these coasters running well. Some do it great. Kennywood's three woodies are all smooth and they're 100 years old. Others have problems and I want to talk about those today. Some of these are gone, others were bad and have been fixed, but I want to highlight some of the worst experiences that I've had. These are America's roughest wooden coasters. Like I said, this list is based off my own experiences. So when I mention a coaster, I will also mention the year I rode it when it gave me the rough ride. This also means I don't have a first-hand opinion of Wildcat at Lake Compounds or Hellcat at Clementon Park. These are apparently horrible, but Wildcat was closed for me and I've never been to Clementon Park. Anyway, here are a few coasters that couldn't make the cut. Gold Striker at California's Great America. This was reasonable when I first rode in 2018. It wasn't until my fourth ride that I really started feeling it. Then I rode in 2021 and one ride was more than enough. Apparently it got some track work before the 2022 season, so hopefully that fixed it. Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds. This coaster has an amazing setting, going up and winding down a mountain, and it has the potential for airtime. I didn't get any when I rode in 2018, but people swear it has it, so okay. But I rode this three times and it was a grind. Not bad enough to be on this list, but it would have been way more pleasant if it wasn't so rough. Outlaw at Adventureland. I didn't mind this too much when I rode it in 2021, I thought Tornado in the same park was rougher than this. I came back in 2022 and, ouch. This was way rougher than Tornado this year. It has good airtime moments, but it beat me up a little bit. Hoosier Hurricane at Indiana Beach. Kind of the same story as Outlaw. I rode in 2020 and it was very smooth, coming off a fresh retrack in some spots. I came back the next year in 2021 and it was not smooth anymore. It's amazing what one year can do to a coaster, and it shows how often they need to address different parts of the track. Last one, the boss at Six Flags St. Louis. This is a monster CCI wooden coaster, but in 2018, it was tough to handle. It was reasonable enough for me to come back to ride it at the end of the day, but it turns out that was a big mistake. All I could think about by the end was RMC, RMC, please, please, RMC. Number 15, Thunderhead at Dollywood, 2022. I've ridden this a few other times in the past, 2016 and 2019, and at first I loved it. By 2019, it was getting kind of bad. Why my last ride in 2022? Just ouch. You know, I always joke about rides jackhammering the teeth straight out my head, but I think Thunderhead may have actually done that. This is a crazy out of control ride, but whether you ride in the front or the back, it's gonna shake you up like a paint can. The first half is where it gets really bad. The second half has a lot of new track and it's a lot smoother. So I'm hoping maybe Dollywood's next project is to fix that first half. Number 14, Roar at Six Flags America, 2019. One of my all-time least favorite coasters. Not only because of the roughness, but also because it's boring. I very stupidly wanted to re-ride this last time. I still had my eye views and I wanted a different angle, but it was not worth it. This gave me a headache that even Advil could not knock out. Now, this did get retracked for 2022, so I am really curious how this runs now. I still don't like the layout, but if it didn't beat you up, that would be nice. Number 13, Wolverine Wildcat at Michigan's Adventure, 2021. I heard some horrible things about this coaster, and that's why I saved it for last. If it was as bad as people say, I didn't want it to ruin my head for the rest of the day. I rode it, and I actually really enjoyed it. It has a very good layout and some very solid airtime. It also jackhammered me near to death. Being a DIN coaster from 1988, that's no surprise. I was really happy to see this coaster get Titan Track in 2022. That's a steel replacement for some wood sections, and it was added from the top of the first drop to the top of the ride's second hill. Given how rough the whole ride was, I wish there was more. But if I ever find my way back to Michigan's adventure, I'd be curious to see how this is now. Number 12, Son of Beast, Kings Island, 2002. This was only two years old when I wrote it, and it was already too rough to enjoy. I thought the helices and the loop were intense, and I tried to enjoy all the speed, but the roughness was too much to excuse. We know this ride's history. We know how poorly it was constructed. And when you add the sheer size and speed of it, it makes sense why it ran so badly so early in its life. I imagine it only got worse. Maybe the lighter trains helped, but this ride was unsalvageable. Number 11, The Beast at Kings Island, 2002. Finally, we have a true redemption story. My first battle with the Beast was in 2002 and it was a brutal one. 
I was looking forward to this more than any other coaster in the park, and it beat me up so bad I couldn't even enjoy it. I came back to Kings Island 14 years later. Goodbye Paramount, hello Cedar Fair, and they really fixed this ride. There were a couple rough spots here and there, kind of depends where you are in the train, but in general, it's nothing to complain about. This year, the Beast got another fresh retrack at the end of the ride, so it's probably even better than when I last rode it in 2020. But in 2002, this was really bad. Number 10, The Legend at Holiday World, 2018. I have a long history with The Legend, going back to 2002. Back then, I said the layout wasn't great, but I thought it was smooth. In 2016, it was coming off a fresh retrack, but it was still very rough. In 2018, it reached a whole new level of pain. The whole track was rough, and there were two spots where it was just horrendous. It was the very definition of jackhammer. So in 2020, I go back and I figure, let's get my one ride and get it over with. But to my surprise, it was very smooth and I enjoyed it a lot. Holiday World has a big job to upkeep three wooden coasters, two of them over 20 years old, and the other one being over 6,000 feet long, but they do a good job. Number 9. Renegade at Valley Fair, 2022 I only got one ride in 2021 and I was really impressed with the layout and the airtime, but it shook me around a lot. I got back to the park in 2022 and got a few more rides, and it basically confirmed what I thought. Yes, this does have an awesome layout and it has awesome airtime, but wow, it's unbelievably rough, at least in the back. Maybe it's better in the front. I didn't try. It seems like it was made to be a back row ride. It's such a good coaster that I would ride it two or three times every time I go to Valley Fair, but it needs some help and I hope that Cedar Fair gives it some love. Number 8. Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee, 2021. I first rode this in 2018 and I lapped it 8 times. And for a 1 year old coaster, I was surprised how rough it was. I think this is well known for having some construction issues, and it was rough from the start. I came back 3 years later. I rode it twice and I was done. It wasn't so bad that I wouldn't have come back for another ride. I'd try to before the park shut down for lightning, but for all the great elements this has, you have to try hard to overlook how bumpy this is. Number 7. Cyclone at Six Flags Magic Mountain, 2001 I chose 2001 because that's the year I rode this the most. This is another den coaster. At the time, it was only about 10 years old, but apparently, the Northridge earthquake in 1994 did some major damage to it, and it never ran the same after that. It also used those heavy B&M fiberglass trains and that didn't help. We were stupid kids back then, and we would have lunch at the Surfside Grill next door and then ride this. It was just pain. Magic Mountain got a major upgrade when they took this out and replaced it with Apocalypse. Number 6. New Mexico Rattler, Cliffs Amusement Park, 2022. I rode this 6 times in 2017 and it was not bad at all. I rode this once over the summer and ouch. I mean, it's not a bad ride at all. The layout is pretty long and it has some good airtime moments. But the whole time, I'm just thinking about how crazy rough it is. It seems to have gone downhill a lot over the last five years. This was built by CCI in 2002, but they went bankrupt in the middle of the project and the park had to finish it themselves. They did a good job, but they need to get back on this and give it some new track. Number 5. Grizzly at King's Dominion, 2022 I had ridden this in 2008, 2018, and I kept hearing how bad people said this coaster was. I thought it was fine, not a great layout, but an overall enjoyable experience. Out of sheer curiosity, I went back to it in the summer, and this is how I described it. Okay, so the Grizzly. God, where do I start? I've never been in a plane crash, or a train wreck, or a multi-car pileup, but I gotta imagine those are more pleasant than whatever that was. Uh, after the first couple drops, it was it just became just like, hang on and try to survive. Hang on for your life. Good God, that coaster needs some serious help. The whole thing was miserable. The entire time, I was riding in pure defensive mode. Number 4. Predator at Six Flags Darien Lake, 2018 What do you expect? Another early 90s thin coaster. It had so much promise after the first drop, but after that, it was the worst experience I've ever had with a wooden coaster. This was my lowest ranked wooden coaster. It only got displaced thanks to Pegasus. But this year, it received 250 feet of Titan track over 9 sections. So if I ever get back to the Buffalo area, I'm sure this will no longer be one of my least favorite wooden coasters. This may actually make it good. Number 3. Hades 360 at Mount Olympus, 2021. My first rides in 2020 were pretty bad. I got two non-consecutive rides and I loved it. The ride is amazing, but you need time to recover afterward. It's so long, it has so much airtime, it has unique elements. It's easily a top 50 coaster. I came back in 2021 and after my first ride, it made me really question if I wanted to ride it again. It was so incredibly brutal, and I said this at the time. Hades, which was awesome, but is definitely running with square wheels, because that thing 
might be top five roughest coasters I've ever ridden. In the end, we did come back one more time to be abused. I guess when it comes to Hades, you just gotta do it. But anything Mount Olympus can do to help, please do. Number two, Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags Over Georgia, 2019. Really, you can say 2018 or 2019. They were both equally bad. I got one ride each visit, and even though I think the ride itself is good, I couldn't go back and do it again. It's the only coaster I've ever ridden that was so rough that I almost threw up. On my first ride, if there was one more hill before the brakes, I would have lost it. You won't find this on any of my worst coaster lists, because, through the brutality, it has good airtime and it's an exciting ride. I guess I wasn't the only one who thought this was too much. Between 2019 and 2022, they retract almost the whole ride and I'd love to get back out there to try it. I was there over summer, but I didn't have time to go to the back of the park. Maybe when Air Force One opens, I'll try to get there and ride it. That was painful. That hurt. Number 1. Blue Streak at Connie at Lake Park, 2018. Here's one coaster I will never get to try again after it burned down earlier this year. But I got two rides in 2018 and it was unforgettable. In the back, I was bouncing around so much I thought I was going to break my back. Despite that, we were willing to try the front and it wasn't as bad. But the movements around the turns were so jerky, I nearly shattered my kneecap on the lap bar. This is another coaster that had some good moments in the layout. And it's not one of the worst coasters I've ever ridden, but it was definitely the roughest. I'd be surprised if I ever ride another coaster that feels as dangerously rough as this one. That's it for my roughest wooden coaster experiences. Let me know about yours, and what you think about the coasters on this list. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're new here, please consider giving me a sub for more content just like this. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright-free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel if you love baseball also. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.